Hey everyone, welcome to another review. Today we are going to take a look at the Hanamule watercolor book. So this is a watercolor sketchbook made by the German company Hanamule. I actually was pretty drawn to their exterior, which is why I bought this sketchbook. It comes in different sizes. The one that I have is A5 size. So here it says natural white watercolor paper featuring fine green structure on both front and back sides suitable for wet painting techniques ideal for panoramas acid free with long sorry with high longevity the paper weight is 200 gsm and there are 60 pages i've been using this since july 2018 and i filled up more than half of the sketchbook so i have a pretty good idea how it performs today i'm going to um, talk about that i'm not sure what is this material but it's very nice it's like canvas here's a comparison with a cloth bound sketchbook there's an elastic band on the side to keep the sketchbook closed but this is going to lose its elasticity in a few years time like this this is the global art materials watercolor journal and there's this little bookmark here the binding is excellent you can open the sketchbook flat so if you want to draw panorama scenes you can do so very easily you can draw across the page cutter very easily the paper is very well stitched and there is very minimal gap between the pages, the left and right pages. The stitching is very tight. The corners are nicely rounded off as well as the pages within. Let's take a look at selected sketches and talk about how the paper performs. I'll give you a proper sketchbook tour when I fill up the whole book eventually. So this is a sketchbook that is good for quick pen and ink sketches with quick watercolor. It's not that good when it comes to wet on wet technique. In terms of uh, quality, it is actually not very different from the Global Art Materials Watercolor Journal. It's not very different from the Stillman and Burn sketchbooks, the ones with the thicker paper. Um, by quality, I mean how the watercolor reacts on the paper. So when it comes to wet on wet techniques, it's a bit challenging. What I mean by that is, um, take a look here. Here I'm trying to blend the darker tones into the lighter tones and into the white of the paper. And on this paper, it's very difficult to do so because the colors, the paint, they tend not to move that much. So the transition between the darker areas and uh, the lighter area, you can see here, the transition is quite abrupt. You can be a bit more careful, be a bit more deliberate to get the softer edges, but overall it's quite challenging to get the soft, gradual blending of colors. You can see here the transition also quite abrupt. Here are some more examples. You can see the transition between this color and this color. It's quite abrupt here as well, the green to the orange. You can see it's not as soft compared to what you can get on 100% cotton paper. Here as well, the transition, it's pretty abrupt. You can tell very clearly that um, there are two colors being used and they sort of don't mix together very nicely. I mean, it's nice, but it's not as nice compared to what you can get on cotton paper. So sometimes when I'm painting, I can feel that the paint is a bit patchy like this because they don't diffuse softly. It's not like this where you can see the colors blend so softly into one another. This is 100% cotton paper, hot press from Archers. And with good watercolor paper, when the wash is wet, you can add in an additional color onto the wet wash and the colors will diffuse softly. Now you cannot achieve that with this paper. So that's why some of the washes, they appear to be a bit patchy. The paper is great for pen and ink. The lines, they are very sharp. The paper texture is considered fine green, so it's not as rough compared to other types of cold press paper. This is the Daler Rowney cold press. You can obviously see the texture but here it's more like those cartridge paper these are pencil marks drawn with a wooden pencil so you can see the 
rough edges. Now this sketchbook is able to show off colors quite well because the paper is quite white and it can reflect the colors um, very vibrantly. If you want to create a color swatch book or test out your color mixes, I think this is a good sketchbook to paint on because the colors, they look really nice, really vibrant on the white paper. Because the paper doesn't have a lot of texture, you have to rely on the granulation of the paint to create some of the texture. For example, this is ultramarine. You can see that the texture, it's really beautiful. These are the greens mixed with ultramarine. You can see some texture as well. This is cobalt blue from the brand Blocks. This is a pretty flat color because it doesn't have any granulation and the greens mixed with lemon yellow and cobalt blue doesn't have any texture as well compared to the ultramarine green. The 200 GSM paper does buckle slightly when you use water, but not a big issue. I would usually use clips to clip down the paper so that the buckling of the paper will not affect my sketch. And after I have finished painting, I would wait for it to dry of course, and then close the sketchbook like this and then clip on the side. And this will keep the pages flat. The texture of the paper on the left and right pages, they are quite consistent throughout. With some sketchbooks, sometimes you may see that the left page is smooth, but the right page has more texture. And when you flip over, it's more texture and more texture, which is great. But when you flip over to another page, sometimes it's rough here, but it's smooth on the other side. But for this Hanamole sketchbook, um, it seems that the paper texture is quite consistent throughout so that's great if you use a lot of water a lot of paint sometimes the paint and water will get into those uh, holes where the stitching are and go to the other side so this is something to take note of so usually when this happens for example like this i will not draw across double pages i will just draw on a single page like this or maybe just do color swatches I cannot remember the exact pricing of this sketchbook, but I remember that the pricing is very competitive compared to Steelman and Burn, Global Art Materials, and the uh, Moleskine watercolor sketchbooks. Overall, I think it's worth the money. I mean, this is not 100% cotton paper, so there is the limitation when it comes to wet on wet techniques, but when it comes to pen and ink, quick watercolor sketches, um, no problem at all. If you're also using this sketchbook, let me know in the comment section below. Tell me what you like or dislike about it. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.